Hey guys, so um, we're going to finish with um, section 2.5, solving out, uh, absolute value equations and inequalities. In class, we did the first six, so right now we are going to do numbers seven and eight. So number seven is a little interesting because it has two absolute value bars, so we're going to focus on getting rid of the outside one first. So it is isolated, so we're going to set both the 3 minus absolute value of x equal to 1, or 3 minus the absolute value of x equal to negative 1. And that is us dealing with this absolute value bar here. Now we have two equations with another absolute value, so let's solve and isolate that absolute value. Um, since the coefficient of the absolute value of x is negative, I'm going to move that to the right and move the 1 to the left, so 2 equals the absolute value of x. What numbers have the absolute value equal to 2? So what numbers are the distance 2 away from 0? So that would be x is 2 or negative 2. So that's two answers. And now I need to focus on the other equation there. So go ahead and take a minute and solve for the other values of x that would make this one here true. If you said x is 4 and negative 4, you are correct. So we have four answers for this equation. All right, um, take a minute and hit pause and solve for number 8. Always remember we're getting rid of the 4 first, and then that negative we can't not distribute into the absolute value bar, so divide both sides by a negative 1. So if you need some help setting that up, absolute value of 12 minus 4x equals positive 4. So you are able to solve that, so go ahead and hit pause and finish this equation. Alright, and the answers for those ones will be 2 and 4. All right, so now we're going to deal with absolute value inequalities. We briefly talked about this before when we were dealing with the set builder notation. So for inequalities with absolute value, there are two cases where it is absolute value is less than, the distance is less than, and when the distance, the absolute value is greater than. So absolute value of x is less than 8. So thinking on the number line, what numbers have a distance less than 8 on the number line? So here's 8. We could travel any of these numbers up to, but not including 8, so we would put an open circle, but also any of the numbers all the way back to a negative 8. So our answer for this one would be negative 8 to positive 8. When solving these, this is a compound statement, and we are talking about the intersection of when x is less than 8 or, sorry, and greater than negative 8. So when I see this, that is less than, but I say it wrong, and I say less than. So think and. So when you set up absolute value, when you have absolute value isolated, what you do is you set that between the number here and its opposite. So that triple inequality there like we were solving for in the last section. When you have greater, I'm saying it wrong on purpose, greater, but greater, that one is or. So absolute value, you take the original, what is here, and just like you do the opposite with the equation, you also flip your sign. So we're looking for all the values that are greater than 5 or x is less than or equal to negative 5. That would be the answer to that one. The same thing applies for over here on the left. You could say x is less than 8 and x is greater than negative 8, but it's easier to draw this compound inequality here because you already have the intersection for you. And if you ever have to solve, it would be easier to have it all in one spot. So this one here would be... 5 to infinity, and that should be a bracket, 
union negative infinity to negative 5 bracket and since we like to keep it in order of the number line we put the negative one first so this will be the solution to absolute wave x is greater than or equal to 5. all right let's use those rules i just exactly what i set up there put these down put these notes down here so that you have them hit pause and put those down all right so we have to first make sure that we isolate our absolute value part and then we deal with the inequality because we have to remember if we multiply or divide our inequality by a negative we have to flip the sign so number one we have absolute value greater or so we're doing or so you're allowed to remove your inequality after you set it up so 2x minus 1 greater than 7 or 2x minus 1 less than negative 7 so we flip and negate for the second one so go ahead and solving those two inequalities 2x greater than 8 x is greater than 4 or 2x less than negative 6 x is less than negative 3 so or is a union and the there is no overlap so negative infinity to negative three union four to infinity i did the right one first because that was the negative numbers all right number two we have absolute value is less than so we're going to do and so we're going to take 4x minus 3 less than or equal to 5 and greater than or equal to negative 5. Go ahead and hit pause and take a few minutes to solve this compound inequality. All right, so number two is negative one half less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to two. So this solution would be this here. All right, let's take a look at number three. Let's make this a nicer number. So our absolute value here is being multiplied by the number four. So in order to isolate the absolute value, we have to first divide both sides by 4 to get rid of it. So absolute value of 3 minus 5x less than 5. Less than. So we are doing and. We are putting our expression under or inside the absolute value between 5 and negative 5. If it had an equal to, we would put an equal to over here just like this one was equal to. So both of them are equal to. All right, go ahead and hit pause and solve this compound inequality that I have highlighted right here. All right, here, so dividing by negative 5 would flip our signs, which seems weird um, because we have compound inequality. But if you look here, our negative number is on the right and our positive number is on the left. So rewrite this as negative two-fifths is less than x which is less than eight-fifths and as interval notation it would look like this with parentheses good save all right take a moment and i would like you to try numbers four and five solving those inequalities all right before you get too far with number four when you move three to the other side you now have your absolute value expression greater than a negative number so if that was an equal to sign like we did earlier in this section you can't have an absolute value equal to a negative value because absolute value is distance and the smallest thing distance can be is what if you said zero, you are correct. So since the smallest thing that this absolute value expression can be is zero, if we're find, trying to find any value of x that would make that expression greater than negative one, it can be anything because the smallest thing that can be a zero and zero is bigger than negative one. So this one is all real numbers. So write a little note that whenever you have an absolute value greater than or greater than and equal to a negative number that solution is all real numbers 
Number five, moving the six over and then dividing by negative one flips the sign. And now we have the same thing again, absolute value of four x, four minus x is greater than negative four. So this one also is all real numbers. Okay, last two problems here, numbers six and seven. We have a bunch of things going on in number six. Let's change this up a little. I'm gonna change this five to a six. That'll make things a little bit easier, I think. So we're not gonna have a crazy number answer for this one. All right, so what do we have to do first? If you said move the 10, you are correct. So let's subtract 10 on both sides. Negative six times the absolute value of three X plus four, greater than or equal to negative 12. Next step would be to do what? If you said divide by negative six, you are correct. Got to flip the sign. So absolute value of three X plus four is less than or equal to two. Now we have absolute value bars less than or equal to. So we have to put it as a compound inequality between because it's and two and negative two. And solving this out, subtracting four would get you negative six is less than or equal to three X, less than or equal to negative two. Divide all of them by three, negative two less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to negative two thirds. What would that answer be in interval notation? If you said negative two, to two thirds with brackets, you are correct. All right, number seven, eight times the absolute value of X plus three. So if we want to isolate the absolute value, divide both sides by eight. Absolute value of X plus three is greater than zero. Think about that for a minute. What would you think that the answer would be just looking at this problem? What is the smallest value that absolute value can be? If you said zero, you are correct. So what value of X would make the absolute value of X plus three equal to zero? If you said negative three, you are correct. That is the only value we need to worry about because when X is negative three, the left hand side equals zero. There's no other value that would make that expression on the left negative because the smallest thing it can be is zero. And right here, we do not have an equal to, we have a greater than. So what we could say is all real numbers except at negative three. The fancier way of writing that would be an R minus the element of three. If you didn't think about that, or if you didn't know that, absolute value is greater, so we're doing or, so x plus three greater than zero, or x plus three less than, the opposite of zero, well zero doesn't have an opposite, it's itself. So x is greater than negative three, or x is less than negative three. This would be negative infinity to negative three, union, negative three to infinity, it, which is exactly what all real numbers minus the element three is in interval notation. I know that this section is challenging. Come back here and watch whenever you need to, to refresh your memory of these steps. And good luck on your homework, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks, guys.